Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey has been and will be about the journey of life and how we navigate through the journey of life and how to talk about and express our wishes about how we live and how we leave our, this world and being open to talking about it. And of course, part of talking about it, and especially when you get to be my age, is Medicare and how we take care of Medicare and ourselves and our elders. And so we are going to talk to my dear, dear friend. And of course, you all know I only talk to dear friends. <laughs> and this is Martha. Copeland. Martha is the expert, and I say that unequivocally, unabashedly, the expert in Medicare and Medicaid. And she has honors and awards for all the work she does and how she assists people in Medicare and Medicaid. Martha, welcome again. Thank you so much, Marsha. Those are very kind words. And well, she is. I, you know, I didn't make that up. You can't spend what is it, twenty years in this <laughs> industry. You know, you can't make that stuff up. <laughs> That's who she is. Yes. yes. So tell us about Martha. You incredible background. Well, um, I love Medicare, so I always start with that because I, I do love it. But I actually had a career uh, on Wall Street uh, before I relocated to Hawaii and became this person who has a passion about Medicare. <laughs> so what did you do on Wall Street? Uh, on Wall Street, I was uh, in uh, several management positions. I was a vice president with Morgan Stanley, and I was in charge of uh, invest individual retirement accounts, uh, tax shelters, limited partnerships, and mutual funds. So I traveled to all over the country uh, vetting organizations that we worked with who had product for our, our clientele. Wow. And then, so you leave this million dollar <laughs> paycheck to come to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, and, and my beautiful apartment in Manhattan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I really, really miss. And my family and friends, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, I left to come here. And I started at Bishop Trust Company. I was a trust investment officer and assistant vice president and did that for a while before I got into the insurance field and eventually found my way to what I do now, which is work uh, with people who are transitioning to Medicare. Were you Edward Jones? Yes, I also uh, worked at Edward Jones I want Jones to be for sure I got it right yes. because that's how I met you. Oh, okay. <laughs> when my mother was in her last year of life, Okay. We opened an account with you for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So that was a long, long time ago. Yes, long, long time ago. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> so I was trying to remember, was it Edward Jones? I think it was Edward Jones. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So then from Edward Jones, you go into Medicare. Right. Well, from Edward Jones, um, I, was, uh, I, went, I was independent. And I started to actually do uh, a radio show on financial planning and money management. And that went really, really well. But I started to find out that people who had saved all their lives and envisioned a life on the beach or traveling through Europe would often be saddled with health care expenses that they were not planned, prepared for. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes, so, that's most of it. So yeah. it's very intriguing. So I had an opportunity to work with a local insurance company here and work with the Medicare population and Medicaid population. And I just fell in love with helping people navigate uh, the Medicare system because it, there's a, a few things that you need to be aware of so you don't miss very critical enrollment periods. You need to understand eligibility and you want to avoid penalties. So I, I just fell in love with it and love helping people in that so way. So you have your own business now doing Medicare and Medicaid? Uh, yes, I do. Um, but what I am most excited about is as part of my community service, uh, I, I work with people who need more or less 
to really have an understanding of Medicare. I call it Medicare Answers in Minutes, and I just love providing that uh, information to people who need help navigating the system because if you, you only turn 65 once if you're qualifying due to age. So now, real quick, tell us the difference in Medicare and Medicaid because most people don't know the difference. Right. I enjoy um, sharing um, uh, that uh, answer to that. I say Medicaid is for people who, um, you know, were maybe not expecting to have their income um, drop or fall, or maybe they, they just have low income. And Medicaid provides aid to you to help you with this insurance uh, when you need it because of low income. Medicare cares for you because the whole time from your working uh, years, Medicare taxes, Social Security taxes have been deducted from your paycheck or if you're married from a spouse's paycheck. So Medicare will care for you when you meet eligibility requirements either due to age or a disability. So Medicaid is unexpected, sort of a safety net, provides aid to you for insurance. And Medicare, you've been paying into the system, so this is something that will care for you in terms of your insurance needs as you age. So Medicaid is paid by the state. Right, Medicaid paid. is for people who uh, fall below the federal poverty uh -huh. levels, and Medicare is a program that we paid, paid into. into. Yes. Okay, so that's that's the difference. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, now that we hopefully got that one straight. <laughs> okay, now you brought us some slides that will help us navigate <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing called Medicare. Can we get the slides to see what we have? Yes. Yes, yeah, so these are just some common questions that uh, people often ask at least once a year. Is Medicare going away? That's a big question. <laughs> uh, will benefits be cut? How might any changes impact their Medicare costs? And lastly, what changes are being considered to guarantee sustainability of the Medicare system and Medicare insurance. So I enjoy taking a step back and, and really looking at, well, what is Medicare costing, you know, whoever's paying for it? So I just brought a couple of slides to just give okay. you an idea well, of what see. the costs are. Let's see the next slide then. Okay. So wow. <laughs> the, the aging <laughs> of the population. I don't know if you've heard the statistic, but according to the U.S. Census Bureau, Nationally, 10,000 people a day are turning 65, and that's expected to continue until the year 2020. Yes. 10,000 people a day having that 65th birthday. And we're right at 2020. <laughs> we're just about there. Oh, we, so what's the next level after 2020? Uh, well, uh, I don't have the statistics beyond that, but we're expected the number still to continue to be high. But what I show in this graph that is from the uh, Kaiser uh, Foundation is the aging of the population and the rising health care costs are contributing to the growth in Medicare spending because a lot of people are concerned, will it go away? Will the benefits be cut? And I thought it would be important to show the reason that we're having this situation is because of the aging of the population. So in 2010, and I believe this uh, graph is from 2015 um, or 16, but when we look at 2010, there were 40.3 million people over the age of 65. And if you look at 2050, we're expecting that to double, and we are expecting over 86.7 million people to be over the age of 65. So that'll be a lot of people who need Medicare insurance and, and need to have those uh, services I, taken care of. I, I think, now help me with this, if that's the aging population, it means that we are not paying into the system. Is uh, that what that means? Well, uh, yes. yes. Um, you often hear a statistic when um, the program first started, there was like one person uh, collecting for every 33 <laughs> that were actually having and deductions from pay, and now we hear that it's more like one is uh, 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 for every three that are, for every one that's collecting, there's only like three putting in putting to in. the system. Uh, yeah. So yes, as the population continues to age, um, we will have fewer and fewer people who are adding uh, yeah, to so the Yeah, so there's more people taking out than there are people putting in. That's the trend. Oh my. So 
What's the next slide? Yeah, we have another slide, and what this slide uh, shows is um, exactly what does the Medicare spending look like. So it was 15% of our federal budget in 2016. And if you take a look at the slide, if you could see it, um, I believe our defense spending is 15%. So think about that. Medicare spending from our budget is 15%, which is the same as defense. And we were expecting it to grow, of course, as the aging uh, population continues to you know, uh, apply for their Medicare benefits. So Social Security here, is that what comes out of the budget? Uh, yes, yeah, Social Security, there's Social Security spending because of course that takes care of those monthly cash benefits that many people uh, qualify for. So the Medicare is separate because that's the insurance. So yes, the Social so Security if, spending was showing 24% in so if, if you are disabled but you're not getting Medicare, is that what that means? Uh, no, um, uh, people uh, can be disabled and get Social Security disability payments uh, in their 25th month of disability. They may qualify for Medicare. Also, some conditions you qualify for Medicare immediately. So you could have Social Security disability and Medicare as well. So those come out of separate pots? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm... Yeah, okay, do we have a next slide? Next slide. Right, and in the, uh, the next slide, I just thought I'd do something that would just give uh, uh, folks an idea of how much comes from uh, the, the Treasury, how much comes from uh, individual paying into the system based on the part of Medicare. So with Medicare, there's different parts. There's Part A, which takes care of you when you're in the hospital. There's Part B which takes care of doctor visits, lab work, x-rays, things like that. And there's also Part D, which is the part of Medicare that takes care of our uh, prescription mm -hmm. drug expenses. Yeah. So the total spending, and I believe this graph is from 2015, the total spending was like $644.4 billion. So I do hear people complaining about their Part B premium that they have to pay. But I tell them, well, the expenses are kind of high, so uh, it's good when you uh, can pay something that keeps this very valuable benefit uh, sustainable. But what is also uh, unknown sometimes, if your income is below a certain level, then the state generally, you know, each state is different, but the state may pick up your Part B premium. But this is a breakdown of how much is coming from the Treasury, how much is coming from uh, payroll taxes, and how much comes from the individual who may need to pay their own Part B or Part D premium to have this Medicare insurance. So I thought it was good to just give that breakdown of the payroll taxes, what comes from general revenues, and the portion uh, that comes from the actual beneficiary. So uh, many people uh, are very surprised when it comes time for Medicare <laughs> that they have to pay anything. Pay something, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, listen, we need to go to break, and we will be back in 60 seconds. So stay tuned. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha, and I'm Marcia, and we're back. And we are talking to my dear, dear friend, Martha Copeland. And Martha is a genius to remember all of these facts and figures. That's a genius. 
And, but the big thing with most of us with Medicare, with or without Medicare, prescription drugs. Yes. That is huge. I mean, I have heard of people needing a prescription regularly that's a thousand dollars. Yes. <laughs> so what are we doing about prescription drugs? Well, Marcia, that's a really good question because that's one of the proposed changes to Medicare. Uh, there is an attempt to work with the pharmaceutical companies and have Medicare negotiate the drug prices. So hopefully they would, would be lower to the Medicare beneficiary. Uh, I have calls from people all the time who need assistance with uh, more affordable prices for their drug. And I recently had uh, an individual who had a prescription from the doctor that they very much needed this prescription or they end up in the emergency room. Marsha, it was $2,705 oh for a 30-day supply. So every 30 days, you would have to come up with another $2,705. $2, so the first thing is, okay, what, what drug insurance do you have? Uh, we were able to contact this individual's insurance company, and they said they would make an exception and cover it at what's called a Tier 4 level. So this individual's copay would have been $700 per month. Ooh. Isn't that great from 2700 But still but 700 He said, yes. Martha, he said $700 is too much. So in the interim, this person ended up in the hospital twice because they could not afford their medication. So as a last resort, uh, I helped this individual reach out to the pharmaceutical company, and they were able to qualify for a program through this pharmaceutical company, and this person was able to get a three-month supply or zero dollars, zero oh, cents. thank you. So there are programs available to assist you, but you have to know you have, <laughs> how to find them. There's one ad that says AstraZeneca may help. Uh, may help. And, but it was the may help. Right. It is a may help. Right. right. It says if you can't afford this prescription, AstraZeneca may help. Exactly. May. But, but the, yeah. And may is a big word because in many cases, if you're on any type of a government program, um, sometimes they don't help. So you really need to know what programs are available to you that may help if you have a medication that you need to take or you could end up in the hospital or even worse. So I really enjoy helping people navigate the system and find these programs. And then I consider it a win. <laughs> that is a win. That's yes. a win. That's a win. <laughs> we cheer and we get all excited whenever we can do that. And I've been you know, uh, able to help many, many people uh, with this, many people. Oh my gosh, the, the thought, I don't take any medication, so thank you, God. Yes. Uh, yeah. But the idea that a thousand a month, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that was only one medication. That's just one medication. Right, and again, some people think when you qualify for Medicare that all of your co-pays and cost sharing would be zero, so they don't realize that you need to plan when you're in retirement, you're on a fixed income, you need to understand you may have some cost sharing for some of your major, major medical services and your prescription drugs as well. So many people are not prepared for the health care expenses in retirement. Mm, I had no idea. We're retired, but I had no idea because, like I said, I haven't had the, to, the need, I guess is what it's about to say, oops. A thousand dollars a month? Wow! Exactly, and then some people don't understand that. I, I had no idea. I'm, I'm <laughs> one of those that do, does not understand. <laughs> yeah. Another issue um, beyond the prescription drugs, a lot of people don't understand that Medicare is for medically necessary service, services. So I just had a family uh, from New Jersey um, that contacted me because. Uh, one of the family members felt her loved one was being discharged from the hospital prematurely. And this person said, Martha, I keep showing their Medicare insurance cards and they're telling me my loved one has to leave or it's $2,000 uh, per day. So I was able to look into the case, investigate and talk to some professionals. They gave me permission, authorization to do so. And it turns out that this individual no longer needed any medically necessary care. They needed what's called activities of daily living. They needed help, you know, preparing food, eating, dressing, bathing, getting, you know, 
up from the bed and so on. So that's not considered medically necessary. So your Medicare insurance is not going to cover things that are not medically necessary unless, you know, there's some additional benefits with the plan. But it's very important that people understand a lot of the expense that they did not anticipate was when your loved one no longer needs what's medically necessary, but what they really need is long-term care, which are activities of daily living. Isn't so long-term care is the insurance you buy separately. Correct, correct. But people will show the Medicare card not knowing the difference between medically necessary services that are Medicare covered and approved versus activities of daily living. Okay, now speaking of Medicare, if you, excuse me, if let's say you get sick and you didn't know anything about Medicare mm -hmm. and you at least when you left your job, they told you you needed to, you were 65, mm -hmm. you needed to sign on. Mm -hmm. Then you get sick and now you get a bill. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, why am I getting a bill? What, what am I getting a bill for? Right. I have people in that situation where they are not aware of the enrollment periods. So they're very accustomed to seeing advertising, mass advertising about Medicare between October to December of each year. So they think they need to wait until October. So and many times they may leave a job, they had employer coverage, that ends, and they're waiting for October, but they don't have to, and they end up missing critical deadlines to pick up their Medicare Part A and Part B so that they can pick up a private plan, but they miss that deadline, and then they could be subject to um, you know, penalties um, for as long as they have Medicare in the future. And I had a, a gentleman actually in that situation, and he did end up in the hospital, and he ended up with a very, very significant bill because he had no employer coverage, he never picked up his Medicare A and B, he ended up in the hospital with no insurance, he was 100% out of pocket for the services that oh. he was provided. So he called me and he said, can you come meet me at the hospital? And I'm like, meet you at the hospital, what's wrong? He said, I just found out that I'm 67, I was supposed to sign up for my Medicare Part A and Part B, I never did. So I'm 100% out of pocket for this emergency. So now he has a heart attack. All right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping the fact that I did run down with my iPad and assist him, uh, he, it worked out. Yeah, <laughs> he still had a $150,000 bill he had to pay, but he was happy because <laughs> he could have been yes. far more. So, yes. And he recovered from uh, his situation, his episode yeah, but, of illness. But uh, like I said, oh, oh, oh. And right. imagine that. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollar bill. Yes. yes. And no coverage. And no coverage. No coverage. He thought it was automatic. He I thought did it too. was automatic. Well, and that's I, one I of the too. issues. Yeah. When people are collecting their social security cash payments prior to um, their qualifying age for Medicare, which is sixty five. Uh, if it's due to age, but any age, if, if it's a disability, you may qualify. But they're waiting for the card because their friend got a card and they don't know that if they did not choose to get their cash benefits, maybe they're working waiting for full retirement age at 66 or 67, then they will have to contact Social Security Administration and get the ball rolling. So many times they don't know that. They're waiting for the card to come. They overlook it. They end up in the hospital. You're 100% out of pocket if you have no coverage. Ooh, that's scary. Yes. That is really scary. Yes. So yeah. Medicare is very important uh, to learn about. You need to understand eligibility, enrollment. You need to understand penalties that can be with you for life. And you need to understand you don't just wait between October and December to learn about Medicare. <laughs> so tell me, um, now, how do people, can people call you? I mean, we're talking about you, but can people call you or write to you? How, how do they reach you? Well, I do a radio show, and people generally just call me, and they'll have a question or two, and I, I'm more than happy to assist them with that. So, yeah, people do call me. So what is, where is the radio station? Um, the radio station, I'm on AM 690, The Answer, and people can hear me on Sundays at 930 or Saturdays from noon to 
12.30, I think. <laughs> so they can so, just call the station? They can they, call they, the station, or and they provide my number. They provide you. Is there a yeah. number we can? Yeah, yes. my number is 808-230-3379. 808-230-3379. And people can call me, and I answer general questions. I generally you know, push them back to uh, Social Security Administration uh, when it's necessary, or Medicare. But the worst thing I find happens to people sometimes is they're calling Medicare when they need to start the process with the Social, Social Security. Security Administration. So I make sure that I'm guiding people towards the resources that are available. Sometimes people just don't know where to look because the last thing is to say, Martha said, I want people to get it straight from the horse's mouth. So yeah. they need to work with Social Security Administration or Medicare. But the problem is, of course, you have the contacts, but you don't know what it's like to try to call Social Security and get them. Up. That's impossible. Trying to call them on the phone is impossible. See, you don't know that because you have the inside track. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I will say is don't call on Monday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> call on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> okay. One, we're, we're just about out of time. Uh, we one last time give us a telephone number or email where where we can contact you sure my telephone number is 808-230-3379 good and is there a telephone email uh yes i have an email it's get to aloha at gmail.com get so, to with the, the number, number two. two yes aloha at gmail.com great <laughs> well my dear, it's always a pleasure spending time with you, and we look forward to you coming back, and we will see you next time. Okay.